Good morning, sports fans, and welcome to Sports Ball, a series where we talk about sports, teams, their histories, and why all of this matters. If you're watching, then you're probably one of the following. A kid who doesn't know sports history, a non-American who's trying to pick a sports team and wants to learn about their history, a hipster who's trying to absorb the bare minimum of sports knowledge so you don't look uncool in front of your sports-loving friends, a no-fun Norman who's going to nitpick what I say in the comments, someone who knows sports history and wants a fun topical video about their interests, or you just found this video by mistake. In any case, welcome and thank you for watching. Today's video is going to cover basketball and specifically the National Basketball Association. We'll cover the origins of the sport, early history, legendary players, and, and hopefully a lot of other stuff. And we're going to try to do it in about 10 minutes or so, so you can get on with your life. And the clock starts now. Basketball was created in 1891 in Springfield, Massachusetts by a dude named James Naismith. Naismith was a physical education teacher who wanted to create a sport that would allow his students to be active during the winter months because you could only be inside in Massachusetts during the winter months because it was really, really, really cold. So he took some peach baskets and nailed them up on the lower railing of his gym, uh, because gyms had balconies back then, and he used a soccer ball as the first ball. The goal of the game was to put the ball into a peach basket as many times as possible. Every time that someone did this, the game had to be stopped for a janitor to get a ladder to climb up and retrieve the ball to continue play. Naismith created 13 rules for his new game, and we're probably just going to show them along the bottom because I can't be asked to talk about them in 10 minutes. The first game was played between two teams of nine players on the Armory Street Court. The final score was one to nothing. Basketball quickly grew in popularity, though, with some colleges in the military adopting it and creating teams. The primary force of driving basketball within America was the YMCA, as that's where Naismith worked. Outside of the States, the military combined with the YMCA to help spread basketball's influence, and it picked up particularly during World War I when, you know, America actually went to other countries. Eventually, a professional league was formed in 1898, containing six teams, um, and that league actually folded in 1904. The next iteration of basketball was a series of one-off events, containing teams who played against challengers for money. The most successful of these was a team named the Original Celtics, a team which actually bears no resemblance to the Boston Celtics of today, except in name. They primarily played against a team named the Harlem Wrens, or Renaissance, for long. The Wrens were, first, were the first American basketball team made entirely out of people of color and they even won the first professional world basketball tournament that was held in 1939. Basketball had widespread adoption in rec centers, the military, and college, but it's the professional leagues where we first turn our eyes. The first real basketball league that actually stuck was the one that we know today, the National Basketball Association. The NBA was actually comprised of two leagues before it emerged, the Basketball Association of America and the National Basketball League. There were originally 12 teams that merged in 1949, and some of those teams still exist in the NBA today, like the Boston Celtics, New York Knicks, Philadelphia Warriors, who are now called the Golden State Warriors, the Minneapolis, now Los Angeles Lakers, and the Fort Wayne, now Detroit Pistons, the Toronto Huskies, who are now the Raptors, and the Rochester Royals, who are now the Sacramento Kings. Some teams from the original National Basketball League uh, created other leagues but were folded into the NBA later, such as the Denver Nuggets, the Tri-Cities Blackhawks, who moved to Atlanta to just become the regular Hawks, and the Syracuse Nationals, who became the Philadelphia 76ers. The first NBA game was played at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto between the Toronto Huskies and the New York Knicks. The Knicks won the actual first NBA game, making it one of the only bright spots in their long history. However, the early years of the NBA were dominated by one team, the Minneapolis Lakers. The Lakers featured a man named George Mikan, who was widely regarded as the game's first superstar. Mikan led the Lakers to four titles between the years of 1950 and 1955, creating the league's first dynasty. Two things changed that subsequently ended the dynasty. The first was the introduction of the 24-second shot clock in 1954, which means that 24, which means that teams had to wait or had at least 24 seconds before to, before they had to shoot the ball or else the other team would get it. The second was Mikan's retirement in 1956. His impact was so huge that in his absence, the team became so bad that it eventually had to relocate to Los Angeles, where it became the most obnoxious basketball team ever created by human minds. Another thing happened in 1956. A player named Bill Russell entered the league with the Boston Celtics. Russell's arrival in Boston kicked off a stretch of dominance not seen by any other sports team in, you know, really anywhere else. From the years of 1956 to 1969, the Boston Celtics won 11 titles in 13 seasons. The league also saw a huge shift in expansion, which kind of helped aid this. In addition to the Lakers moving to Los Angeles, the Philadelphia Warriors moved to San Francisco to become the Golden State Warriors, the Syracuse Nationals moved to Philadelphia to become the 76ers, and the Tri-City Blackhawks, as we said before, moved to Atlanta to simply become the Atlanta Hawks. There were also expansion teams like the Phoenix Suns, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Seattle Supersonics, and the San Diego Rockets, who later moved to Houston. Chicago got two teams, the Chicago Packers and Chicago Bulls. The Packers later moved to Washington and became the Washington Bullets, who are now known as the Wizards. 
The NBA in the 1950s was best, 1960s was best embodied by two people, Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Russell was a defensive mastermind and led the Boston Celtics to the aforementioned glut of championships, but Chamberlain joined the league in 1959 with the Philadelphia Warriors and is probably a man who is deserving of a whole video on his own, honestly. He's probably the first mythical figure in the NBA. A man so freakishly athletic and talented, he owns so many NBA records and many other records that are just as ridiculous. He owns the NBA record for most points in a game, most rebounds in a game, and is the only person ever to average 30 points and 20 rebounds per game in a whole season. Blocks were not a recorded statistic when he played, but it is widely assumed that he would hold that record as well if it were true. He was 7 foot 1, an Olympic sprinter, and also claimed to have slept with over 2,000 women, um, which would be an amazing statistic if anyone could prove that. And he was so effective at basketball that the rules had to be changed to widen the painted area around the rim so that no one could camp under there like he used to do. But the NBA in the 1960s faced another crisis, the emergence of another basketball league to compete for views. The American Basketball Association. The ABA was founded specifically to challenge the NBA to the point at which it could merge with the NBA and get a huge buyout. The ABA was famous for a couple of things, using a red, white, and blue ball, having a slam dunk contest, and also the use of a three-point shot and generally flashier offensive play. The ABA was finally successful in getting a merger in 1976, and after that merger, four teams immediately joined the NBA, the San Antonio Spurs, the Indiana Pacers, and the New York Nets, who later settled with the Knicks, sold off the contract of a player named Julius Irving, and relocated to New Jersey, and the Denver Nuggets. Other teams like the Utah Stars, the Spirit of St. Louis, the Virginia Squires, and the Kentucky Colonels folded just after the merger. However, the NBA also added teams later to expand into more markets to prevent any other league like the ABA from doing what they did. Teams that were created during this period were the Portland Trailblazers, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Buffalo Braves, now the Los Angeles Clippers, and the New Orleans Jazz, who later moved to Utah but managed to keep the name because if there's one thing Utah's known for, it's their knowledge of the blues. After the merger, the NBA really started to take off in popularity in the 80s. This was due to three things. The first was the introduction of the three-point shot in 1979, and the second and third things were the revival of a classic NBA rivalry through two players, Magic Johnson on the Lakers and Larry Bird on the Celtics. It's pretty fair to say that Magic and Larry actually saved the NBA, which was at risk for going under from lack of views, and this was mostly because they reignited a classic rivalry and it led to huge surges in, population, in popularity around the world. Um, however, after Magic and Larry started getting older, the NBA had a big problem. Bird and Magic were not the stars they once were, and the league was getting bigger, but there were no big stars to take their place. The Detroit Pistons had an iteration called the Bad Boy Pistons, and they'd kind of captivated the league through their aggressive and physical style of play, but they were generally viewed as unlikable unless you were from Detroit. The new, the new commish, David Stern, needed someone of Bird or Magic's star power to really carry the league into the new decade. Fortunately, in 1984, Stern got his wish. The Chicago Bulls drafted a shooting guard out of the University of North Carolina named Michael Jeffrey Jordan, and the rest, as they say, is history. A lot of people debate about who is the greatest player of all time, but Michael Jordan definitely has to be in that conversation. Many people might even say that the biggest challenge in sports is to argue why MJ isn't the greatest basketball player ever. At any rate, Jordan's impact was immediate on the Bulls, but it wasn't until 1990 where he really took over as one of the true stars of the NBA by finally defeating the Bad Boy Pistons and taking down Magic Johnson's Lakers at the start of a three-peat, or three consecutive championships. Jordan then famously took a year off to play baseball, but then he came back and three-peated again with the Chicago Bulls, and fortunately he um, chose to retire after that or else we'll probably still see MJ playing today. Uh, MJ's story is actually worth a whole video on its own, but thanks to me, thanks to him, I don't have to make that video. He actually held an eight-part documentary called The Last Dance. If you love sports documentaries, I heartily recommend giving this one a watch. As you might guess, uh, the NBA had become a league full of superstars, and with MJ gone, the league was missing its next superstar. The next superstar fell into the lap of the Los Angeles Lakers, who acquired Kobe Bean Bryant, yes, that's his real middle name, in a draft day trade with the Charlotte Hornets. Kobe brought MJ's aggressive style of play into the new millennium with the glitz and glamour that only LA could provide. Kobe joined Shaquille O'Neal and MJ's old coach, Phil Jackson, to win a grand total of five championships in his career, including a three-peat from 2000 to 2002. However, in contrast to the star power of Los Angeles, a dynasty also began forming in San Antonio. The Spurs drafted Tim Duncan in 1997 with the number one pick in the draft, and together with their star center David Robinson formed the Twin Towers team that together with that began a quiet run of success from 1999 to 2014. Over the course of that time, they won 11 division titles, six conference championships, and five championships. 
They were able to do this through the quiet consistency of Tim Duncan, the creativity of point guard Tony Parker, and the mercurial nature of Manu Ginobili. Between the Lakers and Spurs, the Western Conference of the NBA ruled the league in the decade following MJ's retirement. That all began to change when the Cleveland Cavaliers dropped at a small forward from Akron, Ohio, named LeBron James. King James, as he had been called, not only brought Cleveland back to legitimacy, but also lent the Eastern Conference some respectability. He repeatedly brought Cleveland to the cusp of the championship, but was ultimately unsuccessful. After his contract was up, he decided to team up with two other superstars named Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh to form the Big Three in Miami. Despite famously proclaiming that they would win six titles, the team was successful in winning two back-to-back -back championships in 2012 and 2013. LeBron is noteworthy as, as being one of the last physical interior scorers in the league. Arguably, the league shifted to be more dependent on smaller, quicker shooters to counter LeBron's physical play style. LeBron's career is commonly compared to Michael Jordan's, having won multiple championships, being a team and cultural leader during the career, and being the face of the game worldwide. While there may be some debates as to who is the greatest of all time, or the GOAT, LeBron is definitely one of the greatest players of all time. The game today is, is almost unrecognizable from the game that started out in the 1890s in Massachusetts. A 1-0 game is unheard of in basketball today, but it was commonplace back then. However, the global impact in the game cannot be overstated, whether it's pretending to be Golden State Warriors superstar Steph Curry in pickup games, purchasing signature shoes in a multi-million dollar designer sneaker industry popularized by Michael Jordan, or even yelling Kobe as you throw a piece of trash in a wastebasket, the game of basketball has irrevocably changed the way we function as a culture. And honestly, that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, that's a brief summary of the NBA in about 10 minutes. I really hope you enjoyed this video and stick around to see uh, more videos highlighting different histories of sports, leagues, stats, and players.